I have one meal a day. Provided my children have three, I'll have one meal if I'm lucky. From the country's seaside towns, through the leafy suburbs and rural villages, this is the reality of child poverty in the UK. Often invisible, always corrosive. Everyone said, don't cry in front of her, but it's very hard when you live in the same room. But what happens when COVID batters already struggling families? And what are we doing to turn the tide? We need to keep that focus on these children, because otherwise they're going to grow up remembering us for how we failed them, rather than for how we got behind them and gave them the best start in life. Baby blankets, nappies, wipes, food. Um, every week we're seeing an increase of families now. Every Thursday in a Hartlepool side street, Emily opens her car boot to families with young children in need. We started off with 12 our first week and now it's on average 30, 35 and rising every week. It's just getting harder for people. Um, money's getting tighter. Emily runs the baby bank almost single-handedly. Since the March lockdown, she's had to take it outside, a mix of pop-up and deliveries. Covid's up demand. What we are seeing is people saying, please, do you have a coat for my child? Because I can't afford to feed and splash out for a new winter coat. And what do you say to that? We get one for them. We've never turned anybody away. That's OK. And how shocked have you been by what's happened, what people are telling you? Horrified. Just behind me, very close to Emily's baby bank, there is a line of getting on for 100 people. They're queuing up for the local food bank and in amongst them there are parents, pushchairs, little babies. Uh, we've been asked not to identify any of the people in that queue, but it is a sign of the hardship that's out there in this town. I think she gets the pot off on Monday or Tuesday, so hopefully she'll be back then. What, what did you get from her? Uh, some nappies, wipes and some baby food. At the minute, me and my husband are out of work, so it's a bit tough at the minute. There was a, a lady I can think of before Christmas who I dropped off to her doorstep who cried and she said, I'm so sorry to have to get in touch with you. I've been on furlough since the end of my maternity and I just can't afford things anymore and my mum has told me it's time to stop being proud. And I went away with a lump in my throat, you know, because she was a working parent ashamed because she could no longer provide and we are finding an increase in furloughed or laid off work people coming to us and saying i'm so sorry i never thought i'd see myself in this position can you help me new analysis of government data looks at incomes among uk families with at least one child under five one third of these children live in poverty that equates to 1.3 million under fives in the last decade, poverty's risen fastest for households with children in that age group, and COVID's made it worse. By July last year, 38% of these families had seen their earnings fall as a result of the pandemic. You've got Layla, she's seven, um, my biggest help and support, even though she's my child. You've got Annie, who's five. Uh, bubbly, outgoing, full of life. You've got William, he's free. Um, little short man, he was a month premature, so he saw his life before his time. <laughs> and then we've got Sammy, who's in the pram, who's seven months old. So, full of beans. Kay's a regular user of Emily's baby bank. She moved to Hartlepool from London in search of cheaper rent. A lone parent, Kay's worked much of her life, but not now with young children. And the two-child limit means universal credit covers her with the oldest two only. After housing costs, she says she's left with £600 a month. You've got to pay your gas, your electric, your water, your council tax, and any other bills that may prop up, and your food. So within a week, my money's gone. I've spent out. So then you've got three weeks, three and a half weeks to the next payday. So it's literally scrimping and scraping off your child benefit, which is every Monday. So you're literally relying on your child benefit to see you through. And what does that mean? I have one meal a day. Provided my children have three, I'll have one meal if I'm lucky. 
According to the new report, the northeast of England has the second highest rate of under five poverty in the UK. Low income families in Hartlepool were struggling before, and the pandemic is making things worse. Most of the cheaper shops are closed. Uh, the price of food's going up, like by 20 p's, but if you work it out, it's a lot. So everything's rising. So there's no break at the end of it. Families with young children are far more likely to be in lasting poverty. Sophia Parker set up Little Village Baby Bank in London to try and change things. But the report from her charity finds poverty in under fives is deepest in the capital. We are supporting families where babies are not having the floor space to learn to roll and crawl. We're seeing families struggling to get out because they don't have a buggy or a warm coat. And just this week, we've supported a mum, for example, who is uh, pregnant. She's got a, a toddler. They're in a, a single room with one bed. There's not space for um, a sofa, let alone a table. These are unacceptable circumstances for children to be growing up in. Just got the stickers. So this one is blue. COVID means the charities had to shut its doors to families. Instead, it delivers to them. Its research shows some young children are at higher risk of poverty, not just with lone parents, but in disabled families, in households where there are three or more children, and in black and minority ethnic families. It's people like Marcia, a cleaner, who is bringing up her grandson alone. Got these two, and then there's one more. Are you okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll be back in a second. Two in three children in poverty have one parent in work, at least one parent in work. The families we um, support were already in a very difficult place before COVID, and I think COVID has made that so much worse. We're seeing families who are falling into rent arrears. We're seeing families who are having to rely on high-cost loans. Deprived under fives in London live further below the poverty line than anywhere else in the UK, according to the new research. That line is calculated as £375 a week after housing costs for a couple with two children aged below five. But in the capital, that family would have an average weekly income of £248. For a single parent with two under fives, the poverty line is £263. But in London, that family would live on just £173 a week. Vicky's a qualified nursery worker. When her relationship broke down after she had her daughter three years ago, she relied heavily on Little Village. I've always worked, and it was only until I had Isla that I couldn't work because it was too expensive for me to send her to nursery and work at the same time. So I struggled. Vicky is now paid for a few hours a week at the charity, but still needs benefits to get by she knows the relentless daily grind of being a parent in poverty. It's just like, you know, her feet are growing. <gasps> and I'm like, no, don't grow. <laughs> it's only when you look at their little faces and you're like, oh, God, I want to cry. <laughs> um, it's only when you look at her face... Oh, sorry. Right. And you think, like... I want to do what's best for you. I want you to have what I couldn't have. I don't want you to be that child that has to go without, but I know on certain things that, you know, you can't have everything. I understand that. Amongst its many COVID support packages, the government's temporary £20 a week uplift to universal credit has been vital for many on low incomes. Even so, in Hartlepool, three months into the pandemic, Kay went into debt for the first time. I mean, I've got myself into loans and things because I need to survive. What kind of interest are you having to pay? A lot. Just a £300 loan, you're paying back 510 Oh, my goodness. So... And what did you need that money for? Living. For food or...? Food, 
children's clothes as they grow in. So, yeah. Poverty lurks behind doorways. For the very youngest children, it can have a lasting impact on their development. But while it can diminish hope, for the parents we met, it doesn't extinguish it. I'm hoping that they get good jobs, that they see that I've fought to for now for everything that they've got, and actually, yeah, they better themselves. I don't want any of my children to be set on benefits, so... For me and Isla to live in a two-bedroom place and me to be full-time working, just to feel comfortable would be nice. But to me, it's not all about money. And just seeing her smile every day is a lot better than money. Katie Razzle with that report. We um, invited the government on the programme. They declined. A government spokesperson told us we're committed to making sure every child gets the best start in life. That's why we've targeted our support to families most in need by raising the living wage and spending hundreds of billions to safeguard jobs. Additionally, we've boosted welfare support by billions, introduced the £170 million COVID winter grant scheme to help children and families during the coldest months. And in April, we'll be increasing the value of our Healthy Start vouchers by over a third to help those in need with young children.